Hello. There we are. Welcome, everybody. Hello. My name is Wayne. Um, had the privilege of playing with Josh for many, many years here at the church. And I guess for about seven years, I was a band called 1232. Some of my bandmates are here. Josh was a very important part of that. We'd invited him along when we had a guitar player quit, and I went, and this is Andrew's line, I know somebody. <laughs> and uh, Josh joined us. And uh, yeah, we got to play for many, many years. <clears throat> and Mike and Catherine and the family uh, asked if we, would, if we would play a couple of the tunes that Josh loved to play with the band. And we said, sure. So I've uh, I played at a number of funerals, but I've never played any rock songs at a funeral. Um, the whole idea is they want to keep this as lighthearted as possible because that's the kind of j guy Josh was. Right down to the socks. I mean, I don't know if you can see these, but... Because Josh never wore the same socks. It would, he just wouldn't do it. We had, uh, we were at rehearsal one night and I looked over and I said, you know, another pair just like that at home, don't you? Josh looks at me and goes, I got about 50 pair at home just like those. <laughs> so you just wouldn't wear the same ones, so. Anyways, this is one of the songs he, uh, he really loved to play with us. It's gonna sound a little thin because there's a very important guitar missing. Josh actually liked it when people got up and danced. That was the main thing we liked to do in the band. So if you feel you got to move around, I'm going to welcome you to do so. And I got, I got permission from the pastor that that's allowed in this, in this house.
There she is. I'm sneaking up back here. Well, thank you. We're going to keep the band up here. We're, they're going to do another. Uh, they're going to do another song for us. But uh, I'm. My name is Chris Dosky, and I'm one of the pastors here at Newmark Alliance Church. And uh, the family has asked me to um, officiate. I guess we're going to keep it pretty light this afternoon in honor of Josh and at the request of the family. So I appreciate seeing everybody uh, adhering to the dress code this afternoon. Uh, very casual sports paraphernalia, band t-shirts. Just really want you to feel welcome and as comfortable as possible. The family asked if we could keep this lighthearted. And I was like, are you kidding me? Lighthearted. But our hearts are heavy and yet our spirit is light. So let's try to be together in the moment and um, embrace this opportunity to remember and share and grieve and dance and laugh and sing. I think all those things are appropriate as you express your support and your uh, care for and compassion for the family and for the memory of Josh. Um, I'm, I'm nervous too, so we're gonna just go through this together. Uh, I want to thank the band uh, 1232 for starting us off in the right direction. What a great feeling. Um, Kathy on keyboards. Uh, Den, or Wayne called you the den mother. I hope that's, I hope that's okay. She Thanks, it Wayne. She referred to her as the de, de, her as the den mother, but it's true. Had to get it in one last time, oh, yeah, didn't you? Keep us in line. He, just, he just said that. So uh, Rick on drums and Paul on bass and Wayne on guitar and lead vocals. And uh, Green River is a song that they did almost every time that they were together, and one that um, Josh enjoyed doing. And he was such a key part of this band. It was so good to talk to Wayne and get a little bit of understanding. And he played lead guitar and often sang along with the band. So yeah, if it feels a little bit uh, light today, that's because Josh's part is missing today. And um, even as the band grieves, I appreciate so much that you give us this gift of music to keep the mood the way that uh, Josh would like it. And I would just like to um, encourage our hearts and create the atmosphere here today and start off with a prayer. And so if you would just bow your heads and, and pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we're here to remember Josh. Help us to connect with each other. I feel like a family reunion. And as we share our joys and sadness, help us to be a comfort to the family. And Lord, be gracious to them. Rem remind them of the love in this room and the shared heartbreak that will draw us all a little bit closer. Give those that are sharing courage today as they speak words of remembrance and their desire to be strong for the family, for themselves, and to share good words to tell stories, and to honor and remember Josh. We ask, Lord, you would begin the healing, and I ask that you would let your peace fall on this place and comfort us in a way that is special to each one and unique to you, in a way that only you can come. And so I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's enjoy another song from the band. No, Josh, I've got to be honest with you folks, our, our, our greatest challenge was trying to find songs we could do without Josh, because he, uh, he, just, he just filled everything in so, so well. Uh, even at the end of this song, he had a really cool lead that uh, just took the vibe of the song to, to great places. So uh, we'll, just, uh, we'll just, we'll do our best with it. But uh, we loved our Canadian content. And... Uh, my guitar on? There we go. Loved our Canadian content. Uh, he loved to do anything with uh, the Tragically Hip, of course. And another one of our favorites was Blue Rodeo. Standing in the shelter out of the rain 
She thrust a note into his hand Later on they took his car Drove on down where the beaches are He wrote a name in the sand Never even let go of her hand that way for those five days in May made all the stars around shine funny how you can look in vain living on nerves and such sweet pain loneliness cuts so fine it's a fine face you've seen a thousand times Sometimes the world begins Set you up on your feet again And oh, it wipes the tears from your eyes How will you ever know The way the circumstances go Oh, it's going to get you my surprise You know my past, you were there When everything I've done
craziest thing is this is the, uh, I think this is probably the largest crowd that 1232 has ever played to. <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> well, we're glad we could be that for you. Oh. Our, uh, our first sharing this afternoon, I'm going to invite uh, Ro to come on up, Ro Agalawate, uh, a very close and dear friend of uh, Josh, and their friendship goes back to the youth days, and I'm so uh, proud to say that uh, these guys were in youth together with, with us, and, and so Ro, why don't you share some stories from Josh? Yeah. Well, um, it's a bit of a blast from the past today. <sighs> um, I first became friends with Josh at uh, Andrew's birthday party in grade eight. Josh was uh, three years older than me, but I remember we hit it off that day over our shared love of pop punk music um, a connection that set us off on years of writing, playing, and performing together in bands all throughout my high school years and Josh's time at college, recording our first EP together as Warfare Within. Um, that band had a number of names, but... <laughs> While we were teens at NAC, we both worked for Josh's dad doing custodian duties for the church. With that came our own set of keys, which we used and abused to spend countless hours here writing and rehearsing very loud metalcore and screamo music. <laughs> My younger sibling, Nim, recently told me that Josh was the first person to show them how to work the soundboard here, a skill they still use as a freelance sound tech and musician today. Josh's willingness to share his love for music impacted so many over the years. Josh even put his business school chops to use promoting shows at the New Market Optimus Hall, booking local and international touring bands, some of whom have gone on to become some of the biggest names in heavy music today. During those years, we all made many trips to Bushnell, Illinois to attend Cornerstone Music Festival, joining the thousands of teens and young adults all camping in a cornfield with a never-ending lineup of our favorite bands Josh was even given the signed duty of being my legal guardian as I was too young to travel across the border on my own <laughs> the first time we went. In one of the later years that I wasn't able to attend, Josh and a few of our festival friends threw together a band they called Canadian Bacon, and they t talked their way into performing a set at one of the many independent generator stages of the fest, an achievement that I know was a highlight for Josh. We shared countless adventures and made a network of friends across the US and Canada, some of whom I know Josh kept up with well past the year, the last year the festival took place. In my first year at post-secondary and after Josh had finished college at Georgian, we moved to Toronto together, sharing our first home away from family, along with our friend Lucas, who Josh met while working at the Last Class Pub. Luke was also a big part of those cornerstone adventures. Josh shared his cooking skills with me as I was learning to fend for myself for the first time. We would spend many evenings playing our vinyl collections and sharing updates on the, susp the suspicious activities happening at our decidedly sketchy neighbors' houses. <laughs> as well as being roommates, that crew, along with Josh's cousin Richard, and one time his uh, stepdad, um, also went on several Algonquin portaging trips bonding over getting an Ontario Park fine for bringing canned beer, and as I, and as I was reminded today when I forgot my sleeping bag, um, <laughs> and um, braving one particularly rainy trip together. Josh was also most at home by a lake with his guitar in hand and was always keen to share time by the campfire with his friends and family. You could always count on many invites each summer to the cottage from Josh. Josh's Josh was fiercely loyal to his friends. He was there for me in some of my hardest times, offering his couch to sleep on, as well as his care and support while I was going through a separation in my mid-20s. He was also an amazing ally to his brother Andrew, myself, and countless others in the LGBTQ plus community. His example of support to others made me feel more accepted and comfortable in my own journey of sharing who I am. Josh also formed a close friendship over the years with my friend Brayden, who I'd met through mutual friends. They formed 
their own friendship over many rounds of golf together and video games online. During the pandemic, we all kept in touch by playing video games while on a FaceTime call with Brayden, Luke, and my partner at the time, Mandira. Unsurprisingly, Josh's love for sports spilled over into being particularly good at the NHL games and Rocket League. Keeping each other company in such an isolating time, those games, gaming sessions turned into late night catch-ups and deep, deeper talks. Josh always offered his time and attention when you needed it. Josh has always been one of my biggest supporters. It's impossible to imagine a world without him, but in these past few weeks, he's still been there. Every time I play the drums or guitar, spin a record we bonded over, or spend time enjoying the outdoors, I'm beyond thankful for his immeasurable impact, love, and care on mine and countless mutual friends' lives. Appreciate that. I love the picture of Josh at the campfire with the guitar and the music and the friends. That's, uh, that's beautiful. I'm going to block out the music that was happening here on the stage right now. I'm going to go la, 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 but that, that's, that's okay. Um, I am going to invite Jordan Heaton to come on up. This is Josh's nephew and uh, give you a chance to share a few words about Josh and the special relationship that you guys shared. Sorry, I have to open up my phone here because I didn't come prepared with paper notes. It's hard because this is the third time in the year I've been up talking about someone we've lost given a tribute. And these things are always really hard to write. But the first thing always comes to my mind every time I'm up here, and it's, I really wish I had one more chance to say goodbye and tell my Uncle Josh that I love him one last time in a proper way. I remember at work, I was working on, on March 27th when Mick gave me the call to tell me that Uncle Josh had left us. And it just felt like another one of those moments where you're in a dream and you try to shake yourself out of it and it's just a fog and you realize that my Uncle Josh is gone you really start to reflect and think about how many times I should have visited more, I could have called more. If only I knew it was our last time, we could have uh, done something together. But as we all sit here in band tees and sports jerseys, it really makes me think of, how my, of what my Uncle Josh represented. He loved music, which is the universal language of the world, and, how it, and it speaks directly to our souls. He was my first music teacher and introduced me into the world of music. We actually, he actually got, or we got, drum sets from Rohan, and he taught me how to, how to play them every Thursday night after school. And I kind of wish I was a better student because I never went anywhere in my life with music. But he taught me that life is like music, and it's at finding your beat and figuring how to share it with the world. And, well, he also taught me how to do a sick beat as well on the drums. I think I was good. <laughs> What makes it really sad is that over the past year, I've only just begun to understand the importance and presence of spending time with your family and friends and being there. Whereas Josh, I feel, looking back on life, has always known that because he never missed a family event. He always checked on you to see how you were doing. He congratulated on everything you did. Even if it was through text or in person, he was there. And that's my goal, is to try to be similar to the man he was. So as I finish up here, I think it's only finish off, I think it's fair that I finish off with the go Leafs go because the show must go on. So give heaven some hell till we get there. We love you, Uncle Josh. Thanks, Jordan. I just love how the music is something that ties almost everyone together here in our stories about Josh and how much that the music meant to him and how much it, it really fed his soul. It's just a beautiful thing. Michaela, Michaela, uh, I'm going to invite Michaela Kingston to come on up, uh, Josh's niece, and uh, she's going to share the reading of Psalm 23.
Come on up. Okay. Hello. Okay. As we gather here today to honor the life of my dear Uncle Josh, I want to read you Psalm 23 to hopefully provide you the same comfort God's word has given me. I'm fine. After the reading, I'll share my interpretation of Psalm 23, and I hope that sharing these words from the Bible, thank you, <laughs> will bring you hope and strength to everyone here as we remember Uncle Josh and find peace in knowing that God's love lasts forever. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, <coughs> I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Just as the shepherd cares for and watches over his sheep, God cares for us, his people, guiding us through life's challenges and dangers. Through these blessings to which the great shepherd leads us, we find our souls restored, our natural life invigorated, and our spiritual life reborn. God can heal and rejuvenate us, especially in times of darkness. Although the Lord does not always keep his sheep from sorrow, he promises to be with us throughout our sorrow. God's constant care can make us feel safe and protected, and we can look forward to being close to him forever. We may not know or understand the why of our experiences, but know that our shepherd But know that our shepherd, our Lord, does know, which is enough. I won't be afraid. I won't be afraid even during these hard times because God is with me. His guidance and protection comfort me. Let your faith take you away from fear. <laughs> Mm. It's okay, I'm fine. <laughs> this is really embarrassing. You're doing great. Uncle Josh, I was nowhere near ready to say goodbye. I would do anything for just one more hug. I hope to make you proud as you watch over me. And I know we will be together again one day. Done. Thank you, Michaela. Catherine said that if uh, Michaela was preparing to give an interpretation of the psalm and uh, just to let her, the, the preaching, we're just going to leave it to her. And I think that uh, the comfort that she shared that the shepherd wants to give us, that's giving her today, is just what um, we all needed to hear. Thank you, Michaela, so much for stretching yourself in that way. I think there are uh, more messages in you. I think it's just the, just the beginning. So I'd like to invite uh, our second band to come on up to the stage now to share some songs of worship and comfort. There's something about the lyrics that are so meaningful in, in both of the songs that have been picked um, to give us hope. And so I'm going to invite you to stand and the lyrics will be on the screen and you can sing if you want to or just let the poetry of the music that comes from scripture 
just really um, penetrate into your heart and your soul. Josh played many times with Wayne and Marianne up here on the stage, and I think he would love this. He would love these, these songs in this time with Justine on the drums and Scott on the bass. And Josh played for Dessert Theater, he played for Rock, he played Sunday mornings on the worship team. Josh was just super, ad, a super adaptable and easygoing and could pick up and pretty much you know, join in with any style of music and any band that had been thrown together. And that's why he was such a fabulous bandmate. You just wanted him on your team. So I'm gonna turn it over to Marianne and to the band and they're gonna lead us in the next two songs. I'll echo that, what, what, what Chris was saying about, about Josh, because when I invited him into the band, the main thing I said to the band was, this guy's, there's no drama. Like, he plays guitar great and easy to get along with, goes with the flow. Three days after, um, you can keep going. Three days after Josh passed away, when, at the moment that he that he passed away, I, I just felt such despair and sadness. And it wasn't till the third day, which happened to be Easter Sunday, I think, I woke up and I thought, Josh is in heaven. I hadn't even thought about that yet. I was just so overwhelmed with joy when I thought of how he was doing now in heaven and just what a reception he'd had. And, and it was just a very joyful moment. So that's something that we can share together as we know where he is. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel when I dance for you, Jesus? Or in all of you be still when I stand in your presence? To my knees will I fall when I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. When that day comes, when I find myself standing in the sun, I can only imagine when all I'll do is forever, forever worship you. I can only imagine. Oh, surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all of you be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? To my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I be able to speak at all, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine, I can only imagine, yeah, I can only imagine. Yeah. 
together at NAC quite a bit.
Thank you. Thank you. And Jessica, not to leave you out, Jessica on keyboard. I'll make sure we get that in. She's a vital part of making this band work too. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to continue our sharing with Andrew. Andrew, if uh, you would come on up. Andrew is the youngest of Josh's brothers. <laughs> so we're going to let Andrew start and share a few words. I've got my grade nine essay. The font is as big as possible <laughs> to make it seem longer for myself, really. Um, well, I'm going to start and end my little, I don't even want to call it a eulogy, um, with um, some Lord of the Rings for you. Uh, I wish it need not have happened in my time, said Frodo. So do I, said Gandalf, and so do all who live to see such times. But it is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given us. Josh, Joshua, Joshy, Joshua, <laughs> Pooh, Pooh Bear, Jack, Ass, <laughs> Jack Ass. It's in the Bible. It's okay, right? Those are just some of the many things I would call my brother. Josh, my brother, my best friend, and biggest nemesis. Oh, the fights we would have, not only terrorizing each other, but also anyone in earshot. Uh, I couldn't tell you if it was me or if it was him who started it, but it was probably me. Wayne said just moments ago that Josh was no drama. I was all the drama. Still am. Uh, there's a photo of Mick, Josh, and I at some Sears photo shoot circa 1992, and Mick has drawn on, I'm like, baby, I was born in 91, so I was the smallest, and he's drawn on devil horns. And at the United Church we used to go to, they called my mom St. Catherine. Just to paint a picture for you. But I think some of you, most of you know that from church or from family. Huh. And about of all the things that we put each other through, I would like to thank him the most for putting a fish hook in my neck. Because <laughs> it was that, sitting in the back of the car, I realized I would look fabulous with earrings. <laughs> it went in right here. Dad was laughing. Mom was mortified. Josh was laughing because Dad was laughing. And I was crying. But earrings, thanks. Josh was not only a very talented musician, but an amazing storyteller. You'd always know you were going to be entertained by Josh if you heard the words, so I got this buddy, or this guy at work, or uh, there was this, I was on the subway series. And those took turns left and right. You never knew if it was true or not until I moved to the city and I realized that subway series was probably all true. It's crazy down there. I will miss those stories. I will miss the endless memes, memes, gifs, gifs, and say all the words, and TikToks that we would send each other. I will miss playing Monopoly Go with you. I will miss staying up after mom and dad have gone to bed to watch one more movie or binge watch all of the Harry Potter movies in one night. I will miss being able to have a whole conversation with you with just grunts and sighs and know exactly what the, each other has said to, to us. I will miss your evil cackle when you see me do something stupid or I say something stupid. Just a little <laughs> You have always had my back, Josh, and I have always felt safe when you were around. And I know that you will be with us now, always watching over with Nana and Granddad, and with Grandma and Grandpa, and the too many aunts, uncles, and cousins that we have lost. In our family, we do not say goodbye. We say bye for now. So it's not goodbye, Josh. It's just bye for now. It's like in all the great stories, Mr. Frodo, 
the ones that really mattered. Full of darkness and danger they were. And sometimes you didn't want to know the end. Because how could the end be happy? How could the world go back to the way it was when so much bad has happened? But in the end, it's only a passing thing, this shadow. Even darkness must pass. Thank you, Andrew. Andrew, you, you took me back to uh, a van. We went on a trip with the whole Perry family to Kenya, and uh, there were times in that van where everybody was ready to beat up Andrew. But, but Andrew, you need to remember, your brother Josh was your hugest advocate as well. He would stand in the way of anything of coming harm to you. So um, yeah, it's a good, a good memory that we share. And uh, close and furious, it's beautiful, beautiful picture. All right, I'm gonna invite Mick, the uh, oldest brother of Josh, to come on up and share a couple words and some memories from your perspective. This is Josh's book I found when cleaning out his, uh, his apartment. Oh, that's a picture, Joshy. Um, and uh, he was writing a he was writing a book. I'm not going to read that out here because, well, we're in church, so it's it's, 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 it's but Ro, you're in it, and uh, you guys started a band, and there were all kinds of shenanigans. So I'd I'd be happy to share that with you guys later. Um, so gone but not forgotten. Uh, that's something I put. A, it took me like a week and a half to put a post on Instagram just to, you know, commemorate my brother's life and. Uh, that was a comment my daughter made to it, and it, it, uh, it just sticks in my head. And um, I'm hoping today I realize he's gone, because, uh, oh. Okay, so I haven't had an emotion yet. Um, I have been an iceberg. So the closest thing I've had to an emotion over this was when Jordy spoke, and I had like a little tear, I'm like, here it comes. And then it just disappeared again, so, and it did that. So anyways, day of mom's surgery, uh, Andrew and I sat in the garage telling stories, having a few drinks, pouring a few on the ground for Joshy. And uh, I'm sitting there and I'm like, why isn't Josh out here? Like, I gotta go in and get him. Because it wasn't uncommon for Andrew and I to be sitting out in the garage and Josh to be in watching football or doing something. And so I, in my mind, I was like, he's, he's still here. Um, I tried for six days to put pen to paper uh, to, to write some stuff down. And I've got some point form notes uh, here today. Um, and finally at 5.30 this morning, uh, while making a grilled cheese, I, uh, and not being to bed yet, I, I, it just started to flow out of me and just, that's so why I wrote Chicken Scratch. Um, so if any of it doesn't make sense, I will apologize. Um, I like hats and I love the Leafs, but can someone someday please explain this to me? Like, why don't they do this anymore? Like, I don't understand, it's not even, it's not comfortable. There's, it's, 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 it's a, I guess it's what they'd say, it's a vibe. Um, I'd like to uh, thank my brother for the outfit because I got his shirt on. I have one of his concert shirts on that I had to ask Luke uh, who it was. And, uh, and I, I got his shoes on too. And I've been walking a mile in Josh's shoes for a few weeks now. Um, so in this book, I'll, I'll read a quote here. I assume it's Josh's. It, it's the opening page of the book. And uh, I Googled it and nothing came up. So I was like, is it a song? Is it something he's... So it's uh, Sun, Moon. Black, white, love, hate, there's contrast in everything. I have no clue where to go or what to do, but that's almost half the fun. And I thought that was pretty cool. I, and if anybody knows what it is, I, don't tell me, because I just want it to be my brothers from now on. Um, uh, I learned over the last few weeks there's some things that I think, or I think we uh, take for granted. Um, and to see all you people here today to celebrate my brother, it's pretty fucking awesome. Um, there it is again, it might come. Uh, and uh, so thank you guys for being here. Uh, to a lot of you, thank you for being in my corner, reaching out and just making sure I'm okay. And thank you for being there for my family. So I think we take time for granted. Uh, I don't know, I don't know how to word this one, but I think good or strong or balanced mental health, I think we take for granted. Uh, the ability to stay and be active. Uh, the ability to know that you're loved. And uh, he was obviously loved. Uh, the, the ability to know you're enough. 
just the way you are. Or, and not the pretend version that, that we tend to show, our, show in public. Um, I, I finally got that post up and, and a guy named Jordan Lister put, a, put something on there. And I, I don't know where this came from, I just spit it out. And um, I, I wrote back to him, I said, hug your brothers and sisters tight, even the ones from another mother. Uh, when you wake up one day and they're gone, I promise you won't look back and say, we were too close. We hugged too many times. We spent too much time together. Or we said, I love you too much. Um, okay. uh, so yeah, I, I talked about not, uh, not a tear. Um, I, I hugged my mom, Mike, and uh, my stepfather, my dad, and, uh, and my brother for the first time after losing Josh. And I'll tell you, like, there were noises coming out of them, like, you should never hear, hear a human being make. And, and my mom, like, Mike and Josh, or Mike and Andrew made the noises, my mom, next level, like, she, she couldn't even stand, her legs were just giving out on her. And, like, I'm like, an iceberg, like nothing. And so, uh, I, I called my therapist. <laughs> That's right, I said therapist. Um, and I think, I think the whole world should be in therapy. I'm gonna say it to this room right now, a lot of you, I know people in this room, a lot of you really need therapy. So, so take, that, take that for what it will. I, I promise you, therapy is good for the human soul and it has helped me through a lot of things. And so I called my therapist and I said, I said, I understand a psychopath can like kill a person and then stand over the body and eat breakfast with no emotion. And she starts telling me the science behind it. Yes, they compartmentalize, da 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 da. And she says, why do you ask? I said, well, I just hugged my mom and my brother and my stepfather and my dad for the first time after losing my brother. And I'm like this. And she starts laughing for a second. She's like, wait a minute, you're not, you're not thinking you're a psychopath. And so if you guys could reassure me after this that I'm not, I'd appreciate that. But yeah, it was, uh, I, I really have, have struggled to find emotion in this. I, even outside earlier, someone said, like, are you okay? People coming up to me, I'm like, I feel like I'm at a house party. Like, I, I, I see so many faces. I, honestly, I feel like I'm at my wedding because it's like there's so many people you want to shog and shake hands with and have a story with, and I know there's not going to be the time. Um, but uh, I, I, I will take away uh, two lessons that, that I'll learn from this um, that I, I've, I've shared with a few people because there's a certain picture that, that haunts my head of, uh, of, of some garbage bags in a backyard at my brother's house. And, um, so, if you think something's off with somebody, you got someone close to you that you think, think something's up, they're not quite right, dig a little deeper, because chances are they're not, and even if they are, they'll appreciate you. And it's okay to cry. That's not, that's not number two, don't cut me short here. Um, <laughs> the other one is, I can't tell you how many, well, I could probably count 30 people in this room alone, but I can't tell you how many people in my life, and I'm sure you guys all have these people in your lives, so you're like, we need to get together. We should do dinner. We should go to a game. We should do this. And unless you say, we should get together on Tuesday at six o'clock at the Old West Wing, you're not gonna do it. And one day they're not gonna be there. So make the, the date and the time and do it. And just do it. So I hope Nike doesn't give me trouble for that. Anyways, thank you everyone. Thanks, Mick. That's, um, that's uh, free advice here, folks. Therapy. It's good for all of us. Thank you uh, for sharing that. And also, yeah, if we suspect something is not quite right with someone, we should pursue it. That's uh, a, good, a good word for us to um, ponder. Thank you, Mick. Catherine. Catherine, she gets the last word this afternoon. <laughs> And do not underestimate this small package. Thanks. It'll pick me up? Okay. Um, I don't really need to speak because my whole family's done such an amazing job. I think they've all done a great job and they're very wise. Um, but I am going to say a few things, and first of all, I want to say thank you to all of you for coming. So many things 
that we say and do during these difficult times come as a result of being awkward and nobody knows what to say and how do you feel and so I told all my kids they had five minutes so now I'm going to try and hold myself to that same five minutes and I also want to thank uh, Kathleen Stewart here for the million things she's done over the past few weeks but her job is always to sit when I talk and pray that I don't drop the f-bomb <laughs> and so Mick thanks for doing it for me I, <laughs> I don't have to do it now um, no one no one can give the true flavor of someone's life in five minutes and the truth is that Joshua had very many flavors and experiences in his life and a different relationship with each and every one of us. There's three levels of reality. We all know this. This is consensus reality right here, right now. We're in this room. I can touch this. You sitting on your chair. That's consensus reality. Dreaming is a little bit higher up. You can articulate some words, you can talk about how you're feeling, you might sing the songs, the words of a lyric, so to a song, that you might daydream about your vacation or your whatever, that's dreaming. But the last one is called the essence level, it's way up here and you can't put words to it. Sometimes not even feelings or pictures. And that's where I have found myself for the past few weeks, is up here in the essence. And so have you, so have you. I know you have. The essence that none of, this, none of this is real, none of this is happening, that Joshua is right here, right beside us. And he is, he really, really is. But the essence is an important part of our grieving process one that we all have to do at some level. We have to feel all the feels. You have to feel all the feels. Somebody said, are you gonna take your painkillers? Are you gonna, I'm like, no, man, I need to feel all the feels today. I need to feel all the feels. I need, I look out here at this room and I see nothing but love, nothing but love. There are many emotions in this world, but at the end of the day, everything boils down to two, fear and love. And this is love. Thank you for all the love. There's no handbook on grieving, but love is a testimony to its existence. Love is more than an emotion. It's a state of being or a vibrational level, if you will. Joshua emitted love everywhere he went. He came peacefully into this world. He did his very best to live a life of peace. And he left in peace. He loved every single person. He loved every one of you, even the people that pissed him off he loved. Joshua entered the world on a sunny Sunday morning at Scarborough General Hospital. And on the day that he came home from the hospital with us, there was an influx of Perrys. Do you know how many Perrys there really are? <laughs> so many Perrys. And they were all in my living room. Right, Kimmy? I was surrounded by a sea of Perrys. They meant well, like they were super excited to meet Joshua and hold him and all that good stuff. But I found it very overwhelming. And my mother was there and I just took Josh in my arms and I stomped into my bedroom and I slammed the door and mom followed me back and I said, I just want to hold my baby. She said, I'll make it happen. Now, many of you know my mom, knew my mom. Mom could make anything happen with just one look. <laughs> she didn't have to say a word. She could clear the room. And that's all. Josh was creative, active, curious, musical always, a conundrum to his early teachers, 
and championed by others who gave him the creativity that he needed. He taught himself how to play guitar <coughs> faster and with more grit and determination than his teachers. He taught himself to write code, fix cars, drive himself to Illinois, don't know why. He looked up to his big brother Mick, who was his hero, and Mick certainly showed him the way around the restaurant business during his college years, and this is where the tribe started. Where Josh met Lucas, his brother for life. Where are you, Lucas? Yep. And when Josh was small, little Andrew came along, and all hell broke loose. <laughs> Our peaceful little Pooh Bear, suddenly under attack, at any and all odd moments of the day or night. And Joshua would just take it and take it and take it. And we'd say, one of these days, Andrew, one of these days he's gonna let you have it. And he did, he did. And I just opened up the back door and said, figure it out. From living, living room bandstands to Mr. Dress Up Productions to marching bands with my mother, Nana, at the helm, wearing a pirate hat, any kind of fun and games was expected. Family was everything to Joshua. And despite the ups and downs he and, he and Andrew had, their loyalty, as Andrew has attested to, was unquestionable. But when Josh hit the teenage years, the tribe took over. By now, Joshua was regularly established in worship bands, cell group, joy Bible camp, winter camps, road trips, you name it. And can I just take a moment and comment on the endless trips to Cornerstone or to Pittsburgh to a random hardcore show in the middle of the night. This crazy part of Joshua, Roe, Lucas, the whole group, this crazy part of their life, I place squarely at the feet of, and you know who you are, Scott Cowie, Blair Cowie, Josiah Gordon, Jason Neva, Jeff Britton. I could go on. They started it. You guys all started it. It was nothing for them to be in Algonquin Park one weekend at a hardcore show in Pittsburgh on a Sunday night and back in class on Monday morning all in the same weekend. They had a great time. Hockey, baseball, guitar, bands, church, rock. This was Joshua's life, and it was good. It was good. One of my favorite things was when Josh would come home late at night, and I'd be in my bed reading and drinking my endless pots of sleepy time tea, and he would just pull up a chair, and we would just talk. We would just talk about anything and everything. Cottage days were a big part of growing up on Balsam Lake. Balsam Lake was just part of our DNA. It's just who we were and where we were. Sundays on the dock, boat rides, tubing, company, always a great time. Card games with Nana till the wee hours of the morning. My mother was gonna teach my kids agency, full stop. You wanna win? Strategize, figure out the game. There was no free lunch with mom, uh-uh. And every single one of them knew it. Now, when Joshua's friend, John Alley, decided to fall for a girl from Brandon, Manitoba, a bunch of them all piled into Ainsley's dad's suburban, and off they went. I was a wreck. Half a dozen teenagers heading out of province on a road trip to somewhere they've never been. Kids call that adventure. Mums call it totally something else. And I said, how are we going to keep track of you? How are we going to know how you do it? And he says, follow me on Twitter. <laughs> I didn't know what Twitter was. But they had a great experience. From trips to Kenya, as Chris alluded to, the funny story about that van was, you know, the elevation in Kenya is a lot higher than it is here. I think we're at 600 feet above sea level, and they're like 6,000 feet above sea level. So when you're driving up into the mountains, you actually are in the clouds. And everybody on the bus would go, Andrew, get your head out of the clouds. 
and they weren't kidding. But Josh did come to his defense. One day, a couple of short weeks after Josh's college grad, I was sitting out in the backyard and he popped out and dropped a bomb. He said, I'm moving out with Ro and Lucas and the guys. I was gutted. I wasn't ready for that so soon. But off they went to their sketchy neighborhood, as Ro alluded to, and they had learned a lot of life lessons and had a great time. I can't even tell you the number of bands Josh has been in. I've lost track. He was usually in two or three at a time, in high demand. He and his music were never separated. He did manage a few years in corporate business, but really it was all about the music. That is until Miss Ruby came along. Now, if you know Josh, you have heard or seen a million pictures of Miss Ruby. They fell fast and furious for one another and never looked back. Miss Ruby is 10 pounds. She's a little white fluffball. She would cry if Josh went to the car to get something. And if I was lucky enough to get her for a sleepover at Nana's house, I'd get a phone call every 45 minutes. What's she doing? What's she up to? <laughs> we lost Josh way too young. In the end, he exited quickly and painlessly, the same way he entered. We know where he is. My mother came to get him. And he called out to his creator. And they took him home. I begged Josh, let me go for you, Josh. Let me go for you. I begged God, let me go for you. But you and I both know that's not how it works. I used to say that my biggest fear was leaving this earth without fulfilling my potential. And I can tell you that if I had been able to go for Josh on March the 27th, I would have fulfilled my potential and been happy to do it. And so here I am, and here we are, with our unfulfilled potential, all of us. Every single one of us sitting here on death row. Every single one of us. Some of you, and I don't know why this keeps coming up every year for me, or every time I talk this year for me, but some of you are tiptoeing your way through life trying to get safely to death. Stop it. Stop it. If you have breath in your lungs, you have not fulfilled your potential. There is more for you to do. Fear is not your friend. Fall, scrape your knees, hurt yourself, get up, do it again. That's not failure. Failure is sitting in your corner and not trying. Who cares what anybody thinks about your trials? You've got one shot at this. You and I must get up every morning. We must make a choice that today we're going to live full out. We're going to make a difference. We're going to try. We're going to fail. We're going to love, and we're going to try, and we're going to fail, and we're going to love again. How dare we do any less? You are one of a kind. One iris, one heartbeat, one fingerprint. This is Joshua's fingerprint. You're the only one we got, baby. You're the only one. Eight billion people on the face of this earth or more, and every person who's ever been born or ever lived or whoever will, you are the only one. If you don't give it your all, no one's going to do it for you. Your purpose is to live with all your gifts and talents and live full out every single day every day until you stop breathing. That's it, that's your mission. My word for this year, every year I have a word for the year, and, every, and this year my word was two words, it's be love. And I'm gonna tell you, that's been put to the test this year. Yet, love never fails. 
When you leave here, I want you to promise me, promise me, you'll do it. You'll do it for Josh. You'll do it for yourself. You'll do it for your kids, the kids you don't even have yet. Promise me you will live your life full out with everything you've got. Promise yourself. You get one shot at it. Do it. And when you leave here, know how much you're loved. You are so special. You are so awesome. And you are so amazing. Take the spirit of our little Pooh Bear with you. My cousin, Sue Brown, came to see me a couple weeks ago. And she gave me this quote. And I said, Sue, I'm going to steal it. This is from Winnie the Pooh. How lucky I am to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard. I love you forever, Josh. And I will see you again soon. Bye for now. Keep playing, Josh. Keep playing. Thank you, Mama Bear, for um, those wise words. And I hope I, I feel like we all just need to pause for a moment and just let that settle in. And um, Catherine, you stuck right with your five minutes. Good job. Good job. And so I want to just say, job well done. You guys all did a great job. I think you did a beautiful tribute. Yeah. Yeah. And we're all a little bit richer from having shared this afternoon with each other. And I want to just encourage you in closing that if there is something that is unresolved or a reason that you have come this afternoon, I just want to encourage you to meet that full potential today. And I know that we've all come to support Mike and Andrew and Catherine and the whole family. And I know that sometimes it's easier to come and support someone else than to receive the support that you need. But I want to encourage you to, to grieve or laugh or to get one more hug, just like it's been talked about this afternoon, to not let this moment go by without everything that was intended for you to be here today. We're going to go out into the foyer. We're going to share some coffee and some sandwiches and some desserts. And if you just want to linger back in this space or just to sit and reflect, that's, that's great. If you want to just share some more stories and you want to um, talk some more or you want to ask questions, that's OK, too. And we want to just make this a space where we can enjoy being together for as long as, as, long as you need today. We're here for you. And um, we just want to say thank you. Thank you to God for giving us a special son, a special brother, a special friend, a cousin, a nephew, an uncle, a colleague, bandmate, um, flatmate, whatever um, might be your connection to Josh. We're just so thankful that we've had those moments. And I know in my heart that Josh's suffering is done. He is free, and he is probably rocking out in a way that he didn't even know was possible. And so I am comforted in my spirit knowing that Josh is in a better place. And yet the rest of us have to continue on, as Catherine has shared. And so we have to make our moments and our minutes count, because we don't know how many of those we will have. And so hug your kids, hug your family, tell them you love them. Tell them that you appreciate the purpose that they have in your life. And meet that potential that Catherine was talking about. Find it every day, a way to get out of bed and to make one foot step in front of the other and make each day count. And I would just like to thank God for you sharing this time. 
Thank you for being friends. Thank you for being family. Thank you for the support. In the weeks and months to come, our grief will continue. And we're going to need each other. And it just might be that phone call at the right time or a casserole or meatballs or whatever it is that you have in your heart, your specialty, that you want to deliver. Don't hesitate. Pick up the phone, ask how someone's doing, and just um, say, I'm here. I love you. I miss you. How are you doing? And even that will be a huge encouragement. Because today is the moment we've gathered. It's formal. We've kept it casual. But we did this on purpose, deliberate. Those other moments have to come from our spontaneity, from our responsibility, and the love that's been talked about so much today. Because you love someone, you have to show it. You have to share it. And so I want to just encourage you to do that. And I'd just like to close, close in prayer. And again, just ask God to give you that peace in your spirit. And if that's something that you're still wrestling with, he's okay with it. He can handle it. Just reach out to him. And I want to bless you with a prayer. Let's pray together. My prayer is that, God, you will draw close to us, closer than maybe we've known before. Through your spirit connecting with us, bring comfort, bring peace, Bring the purpose of life moving forward. May you wrap your arms around Catherine and Mike and Andrew and Mick and Linda and Michaela and Jordan and everyone in the family. I pray a warm hug would embrace them when no one is around. And they are feeling at their lowest. Pick them up. Bring hope in these days ahead and sunshine that radiates despite clouds that might linger for a while. Move the clouds and let the sun shine through. Let that be the warm sunshine that comes from your love, dear Heavenly Father. Help them to be comfortable to ask for help, ask for space, or whatever they need. We give you this day and commit it into your hands. Commit this time of celebration in honor of Josh. May we remember well and experience your healing in the days to come. We commit Josh into your hands, Lord, and we know that your purpose for him is not even finished. And it lives on, continuing in us and the family, his friends, and in every memory and every one of these beautiful pictures that's been shared this afternoon. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite the band to play one more song. And just before we play, we want to invite you to continue the celebration in the foyer. There's refreshments and coffee and tea. And if you go home hungry, Catherine will not be happy. So eat some snacks, some cookies, whatever it is that you like. Um, we thank Kathy and, and um, John for the slides that they shared, but also for the snacks that they've brought. And um, thank you for coming this afternoon and sharing this time. And uh, we just hope that uh, you will continue to to just reach out to each other and, and be comfortable and, and enjoy even these next moments together. So we'll let the band uh, sing their song and we'll follow the family out into the foyer. Lay down my 
burdens I lay down my past I run to Jesus, no turning back Thank God Almighty I'll be free at last In heaven, in heaven I'm going home where the streets are golden Every chain is broken chain is broken oh i want to go oh i want to go home where every fear is gone i'm in your open arms where i 